September. <laughs> This is inv in removing invasive plants along the North Oconee River to try to reclaim our river. What we're removing are things like privet, iliagnus, um, honeysuckle, uh, bu called bush honeysuckle, a, a Japanese knotweed, kudzu. We have all the dirty dozen plus throughout the whole project. And as these invasive plants wind up deteriorating, they, they destroy the native habitat. But they make it so the water doesn't percolate as well. They allow greater runoff. They allow for, during flood stage, they rip up easier because they're usually shallow rooted. And as a result, all of that sediment gets into the river. They also don't provide the food uh, or the shelter that native plants do, and they don't provide it in the same way throughout the four seasons. So what happens is you have fewer numbers of, of different types of wildlife whenever you have a fully invaded site. It also is just becomes this massive blanket of green that you can't even penetrate. So the, the forest that we knew 100 years ago was wide open, had great big American chestnut trees, and you could walk through it and, and from here to New York and not even get on the ground back in the 1800s. Uh, so this, this wide open forest is gone. We tend to, it, it, there's a, a, if you, only if you're 20 or 30, you only think of this massive wall of green as being natural, and this is not. This has been a, a change in the last 40, 50 years as these invasive plants get increasingly more dense and they create these impenetrable walls which are not inviting. People don't really want to get down in them. You certainly can't get to the river. You can't do traditional activities like canoe, kayak very easily because you can't find a way to get to it or fish. Things like you would want to say, or just sit by the river and contemplate or as my family calls it, cogitate. <laughs> so those are the things that um, through this opportunity with Pilgrim's Pride, we have begun to uh, remove this and accelerate this, this action of, of managing our land and getting it back for the public uh, and back for the wildlife. So they, they have come out, they're braving the heat, they're braving the conditions, they're changing the habitat back to native habitat. Uh, it's an amazing process and we are so grateful that they're doing this. Okay. Um, how long do you think the project will last or the, this will take? We're, we will be through third, uh, Wednesday. It will be our last day, so we're doing three days. It's kind of a blitz. And then they have other projects that are gonna go to at the plant for the next week. Uh, we plan to come back and do uh, more treatment. Part of what, uh, one of the big advantages of doing this is that now we can't even get to a site to treat a site because you can't go in and remove invasives because there's so many of them, it becomes impossible. So now we can come in and be a lot more strategic about our treatments. We can be a lot more surgical. So we can come in and, and herbicide out the, the negative plants um, or, and by just getting to them, uh, which we couldn't do before. So this has truly accelerated our land management plans by th about three years. This is where we have safeguarding collections for critically imperiled plant species. So these are plants from 
known rare populations in Georgia. And Heather Alley, my colleague, increases them here at the Mims Lanier Center. And then with partners, puts them back out into wild sites in natural areas. So our goal is not to keep rare species at the botanical garden, but to uh, return them to wild sites so that they can thrive and get them to thrive in the wild. And we work with uh, partners in the Georgia Plant Conservation Alliance to get that done. Um, been working as a team for 24 years. And uh, this is the Mimsy Linear Center for Native Plant Studies. And we grow everything that is native to Georgia that is for restoration, that is for education, that is for recovery of endangered plants. Um, what kind of person do you have? Any old person. Any old person. Well, friends don't let friends plant invasive plants in their garden. Mm -hmm. And I know we think we're gonna, we're gonna try to curtail that plant. If you have invasive plants in your garden, known category one or two, cataloged, mm -hmm. invasive, noxious, noxious species, start working to get those plants off. Um, so, and that's work, and that's time. Certainly, don't bring in any new ones. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to spend your time managing thug plants. Mm -hmm. So anybody can get those plants off. We have partners that can tell you how. We teach classes on this too. And then see about getting some native plants on the land. It doesn't have to be an entire garden of natives. It can be um, just a few spots. The more the better, of course. Mm -hmm. But weaving native plants back into a formal rose garden wonderful. Having wildflowers next to your vegetable garden is great for drawing pollinators and beneficial insects that can help keep pests off your veggie plants. Mm -hmm. So, sorry about that. Get your plant. Um, those are things that people can do and they can do right now. Being mindful of the insecticides that you, you maybe spray, especially on your native wildflower plants. We, the way we teach gardening has changed. Um, holes and leaves are a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to mulch tight anymore. Having some bare soil is a good thing for our native bees. Um, letting plants go to seed and be a little bold in their display um, is a good thing. The birds eating, eating those seeds. Whereas before, when I was first in horticulture, we were taught to keep gardens high and tight. Now we can relax a little bit with that um, and let let plants go through their seasons more and support wildlife by doing that. But that, mm -hmm. we can do that even in a mailbox garden or a patio garden. Potted plants. Um, doesn't have to be big. Or people could do a little pocket prairie um, along the roadside and mow an intentional strip so that their neighbors know, show they see cues of care. So a tightly mowed edge and then letting some, some uh, area grow, grow a little taller and then managing for natives there with strategic mowing, say mow once a year. It's amazing how many native grasses and wildflowers can come back mm -hmm. with strategic mowing. So 